A number of weeks ago, I tested out the GeForce GTX 770 on my channel. I wanted to include overclocked results in that video, but I had some issues getting any overclocks to work using MSI Afterburner. As it turns out, Afterburner was the wrong software tool to use with this card, and an older version of EVGA Precision X16 was the way to go. Shout out to Nothing.mp3 for commenting on my original video and pointing this out, along with providing some other very helpful tips. In this quick video, we're going to be checking out the settings I used to overclock this card and benching it in some games. While some of the games tested were featured in my original video, I've tweaked some of the settings here and added two games to the suite. I won't be delving into any detailed history as I've already made a video on this card. Without any further ado, let's get into it. Like I mentioned before, I used EVGA's Precision X16 utility to overclock the card, specifically using version 5.3.11. As for the actual overclock itself, I dialed in the core clock by 100 MHz to boost up to 1293 MHz, which represents a 19% increase over our base stock clock of 1085 MHz, which the card tends to stick to under most gaming. For memory, I was able to crank it up to the tune of 2000 MHz, which is a 14% increase over stock. For some reason, voltage control is extremely limited on this card, so I was only able to raise the voltage by 12 mV over the stock voltage of 1.2 volts. Now here with some BIOS edits, you can get software control of the voltage all the way up to 1.3 volts, but I decided not to do that here. Even with a small increase in voltage, the card is rock solid stable at these settings. And despite GPU boost being so finicky, this card will do 1293 MHz all day at these settings. Unfortunately, to keep temps in check, I did have to peg the fan at 100%, and it's just super loud at this speed. Overall, this overclock is certainly nothing earth shattering, but we should see a pretty good performance uplift in these upcoming tests. For the test system, I used my former main rig with a 3770K overclocked to 4.4 GHz and 16 GB of DDR3 clocked at 1600 MHz. More detailed specs as well as the drivers used for testing are on screen. All gameplay footage was captured from an external device as well. Let's have a look at the results that the card turned in. First game is CSGO, and I used the community made benchmark with 1080p and the low settings with shadows set to high. Stock, the GTX 770 averaged 240 frames per second, with 1% lows down to 57. Overclocked, we saw averages jump 10% to 265 FPS, with 1% lows rising by 4% to 59. The frame times weren't great due to the smoke section of the benchmark, which tanks the frame rate for a short bit. In regular gameplay, you won't really see the frame rates getting this low. Overall, the card did really well and could definitely provide a competitive experience. Next up is Monster Hunter World, and I used the 1080p resolution with the low settings and DX11 mode. Our card managed 51 frames per second on average, with 1% lows down to 41. One overclocked averages rose 12% to 57 FPS, with 1% lows also rising 12% to 46. Frame times were very consistent and the game was a great experience, especially when overclocked. Next is The Witcher 3, and here I ran the game in 1080p with the medium preset with all post-processing also set to medium. The card averaged 50 frames per second, with 1% lows down to 42. Overclocked averages rose 18% to 59 FPS, with 1% lows rising 14% to 48. The card put down much better numbers than I was expecting in this title, and while frame rates could drop a bit in more demanding sections of the game, it was a great experience overall. Project Cars 3 is the next game up, and I ran it at 1080p with the low settings and 4x AF. We averaged 59 frames per second, with 1% lows down to 45. Overclocked averages jumped 19% to 70 FPS, with 1% lows rising 22% to 55. The game looked good and ran really well when overclocked, with a butter smooth frame times even in a rainy race. The latest version of Minecraft is up next, and here I use 1080p with the fancy settings along with Optifine and BSL shaders using the high preset. Also, render and simulation distance was set to 20 and 16 chunks respectively. The 770 put down 51 frames per second on average, with 1% lows down to 28. Overclocked averages rose 18% to 60 FPS, with 1% lows rising 4% to 29. As to be expected, frame times could be inconsistent, but this was only one loading in chunks. With these shaders, the game looked absolutely fantastic and ran pretty well to boot, as long as you weren't loading in a bunch of chunks. 
As for some somewhat older titles, I went ahead and enabled the NVIDIA DSR to allow for some higher resolutions. That being said, we have 2013's Tomb Raider, and I used the built-in benchmark running in 1440p with the ultimate preset. The card averaged 38 frames per second, with 1% lows down to 30. Overclocked averages jumped 18% to 45 FPS, with 1% lows rising 13% to 34. Even though our average frame rates were nothing to write home about, frame times were very smooth and needless to say, this game was a real sight to behold at these settings. Crisis is up next, and we used the built-in benchmark with a 1440p resolution in the very high preset and no AA. We got averages of 50 frames per second, with 1% lows down to 42. Overclocked averages rose 16% to 58 FPS, with 1% lows rising 10% to 46. The game looked amazing and ran very well. Overall, this card absolutely crushed this system killer of yesteryear. Last game up is one of my favorite decade-old classics, Shift 2 Unleashed. I had the confidence to push the game to 4K with the high settings along with AA set to high as well. The card dished out 52 frames per second on average, with 1% lows down to 44. Overclocked, our averages rose 15% to 60 FPS, with 1% lows rising 11% to 49. The GTX 770 did amazing in this game, and was able to put down some very good averages and frame times despite the game being run at such a high resolution. Well, it's clear to see the GTX 770 did pretty well in this set of tests, and the card seems to respond quite well to overclocking too. Like I mentioned before, I probably could have pushed the card even further with a modded BIOS, but the point of this video was to test the card out at what a majority of you should be able to get it running at. Now I probably wouldn't recommend the card for some budget gaming due to the lack of full DirectX 12 support as well as no more driver support on Kepler, but if you're holding on to one of these cards and can't afford to upgrade, it may be worth overclocking your card to get some more out of it. Anyway, that'll wrap up this shorter video. I do have a pretty big video in the works, so stay tuned. As always, thank you all for watching, like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one.